Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're doing well. So in this video, we will go over a brief introduction um, of the course, uh, which is IT6003. It's called Network and Data Communications course. Um, so I'll be your tutor for uh, this semester for this course. My name is Mary Hamadafar. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, we have two other tutors on board as well. Um, Mahmoud Al Hamad and Mohammed Tariq. Uh, Mahmoud Al Hamad will be the course uh, coordinator. So first up is uh, learning outcomes. Uh, so by the end of this course, you will basically uh, be able to do all these six uh, points that are mentioned here. So you'll be able to explain the network uh, fundamentals, concepts, and technologies. Uh, you'll be able to design and implement an IP addressing sub-network addressing scheme and VLSM. Don't worry um, if you don't know about these at all. That's why you are here to learn about these. But by the end, we will um, know how and what all of these really mean and how they work together on a network. You'll be able to configure and test network devices. You'll be able to describe um, routing protocols which are static and dynamic routing as well. And then you'll be able to configure and troubleshoot routers, routers, whichever way you prefer saying that, uh, using the routing protocols. Um, and you'll be able to implement a fully functional network infrastructure. Uh, all in all, basically, what we will learn throughout this course is how to basically design a network or um, implement a network. So basically, you will be a network architect. You'll know how to design and uh, implement a network. So tutor information, like I said, I will be your tutor for this course. So if you need any help, any you need any answers to any of your questions, um, you need anything at all, you contact me first. Um, you'll see my details here. So this is my email, maliha.mudhafar at polytechnic.ph. And if you are, um, if you've opted for physical classes, you can also uh, come and meet me in uh, my office, at my office, which is located in building 26, uh, room 104. Okay. And uh, like I said, there are other tutors as well. And then we have the course coordinator, Mahmoud um, Al Hamad. This is his email. And this, his, this is his uh, office location. Um, when would you need to uh, contact the course coordinator and all of that? I let you know um, when we're discussing the assessments, but you, you, you should know the contact information uh, of the course coordinator as well. So the next is course outline. It's nothing but a week by week uh, breakdown of what we will be studying uh, throughout a particular week. Uh, I think the most important um, things to look at on this um, slide is basically the exams or the assessments. So in week eight, which is the assessment week, we have our midterm exam. Uh, that is planned. I'll talk about it in a minute. And then we have another Moodle exam planned uh, on week 11 or in week 11. Um, and then we have a project and report that's planned in week 15. And then the final exam would be in week, oops, sorry. Uh, the final exam would be in week um, 16. All right. Apart from that, we uh, these are the topics. If if you want to take a look at it, these are the topics we will be covering every week. Uh, so if it's just so you know what's coming up um, in you know in in the next class. So the next thing is the assessments. So the first one is Moodle quiz. It's worth fifteen uh, percent. It's just uh, the it's based on the theoretical knowledge of uh, of the course. Um, and like I said, it will be in week 11. Then we have a midterm exam, which is on campus, um, packet tracer exam. 
So Packet Tracer is a software that we're going to use. I'll talk about it in a minute as well. But um, the, the assessment would be on campus. Uh, the exam would be on campus and it will be in uh, using the Packet Tracer um, software. Then we have a project report, which is a problem-based learning project, PBL project, and it's a group project. Um, again, you'll get more information about it, but it's worth 20% uh, of the grade. The midterm um, assessment, which is the packet tracer assessment, is worth 35%. Worth the Moodle quiz is worth 15%. Uh, of the entire grade. And then the final assessment is again on campus packet tracer exam, and it's worth 30% of your um, grade. Okay, now what do you need to pass this course? To pass this course, you need to have an average of 60%. So, you know, based on these four assessments, if the average of all of them, if your average score uh, for all of them um, is 60%, then you pass the course. You must pass all the learning outcomes that we discussed, the six learning outcomes in the beginning, and there is no must pass component. That means there is no, no requirement that any of these assessments is a must pass. It's fine if you fail one of them, but if at the end you get um, the, the average uh, or the aggregate for all of them is 60% at least, that's when you pass the course, okay? So the next thing is um, assessments, uh, I mean, sub submissions. So we have one submission, which is a project report, and then we have others are based basically exams, but the project or any submissions, um, or basically all your submissions are scheduled for all the courses to be uh, at 11.55 p.m. unless they're otherwise stated. Uh, the cutoff time for submitting an, uh, an assessment is three calendar days after the Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, how do I go back? Okay, so three calendar days after the assessment is due. So that means if let's say one of your assessments was due on uh, the 20th of a month, let's say at 11.55 uh, p.m., that means the last day to submit it is on 20, uh, three calendar days from 20th. So 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. So 23rd, 11.55 PM would be the last date for you to submit. Uh, after, if you submit, let's say on 24, this particular assessment, uh, then you get a zero because the cutoff date is three days after the submission date. Um, the, the penalty for submitting uh, late, so let's say you submit on the 21st, the penalty is that you only get a 60% grade. Even if you get, let's say, 100 on the assessment, you would still only get 60 um, marks out of that because uh, the penalty is, six, is that you get 60% of um, your the, of the grade that you achieve. Uh, this is again unless you, for example, if you have a, a very valid reason then you can get an extension and that's what we will talk about now. Uh, but if there was no extension or, you know, you, you just submitted late without informing anyone, that's a penalty for uh, the late submission. Now I said extensions are available, uh, but only for uh, submissions that are not exams. If, um, if you need an extension and the, the extension on a submission um, for a valid reason. Let's say, you know, you, you have some emergency or you have some health uh, issues or things like that, in, in which case you need extension to work on, then you have to contact the course coordinator and let them know about your situation, provide evidence for your extension. And then you get an extension, but only for a maximum of two calendar days. 
So let's say the, like I said here, the uh, submission date was 20th, you will get an extension until 22nd. That's the maximum you can get. Uh, but you have to let the course coordinator know beforehand, at least I would say two days before the submission, you need to know, you need to let the course coordinator know about it. What this really means is that if you miss an exam and you, if you have a very valid reason for that, then you can retake the assessment at another time. So if it was a mid semester exam, you can, uh, you can give the exam as with along with the final exam, but if it was the final final exam, your grade will be put on hold, which is H, and then you would be allowed to give the exam the following semester. Okay, and uh, in this case, you only have you only get this um, opportunity if there was a very valid reason, um, and if you have uh, strong evidence uh, to back your reason. Okay. Okay, attendance. This is a big one. Uh, a lot of people fail courses because of attendance. So I would highly recommend that you make sure that your attendance the, uh, or your absence does not uh, reach 20%. Because as soon as your attendance reaches 20%, you're withdrawn from the course and you get a grade which is called WA, which is equivalent to failing a course. Okay, so make sure that you always check your attendance uh, or your absence on your um, banner, on self-service banner, and you you keep track of that. So if you miss a class, usually uh, that means uh, there's a certain percentage of absence that is added to your uh, attendance. Okay, so keep track of that. Uh, reminders will be sent at 10% and 15% of absence. So as soon as you reach 10% and 15% of absence, you will get reminders. But uh, again, this is your responsibility to keep track of your attendance. Okay, exemptions. So in case you have, uh, you know, responsibilities or issues, um, and you know that in those cases, your attendance will get affected, you need to speak about, uh, speak about that with your uh, program managers uh, for the course, or even you can talk about it with the course coordinator as well. And this is only for valid reason, which is medical problems, or if you're participating in a national team, or if you are working, again, you, you need to let um, the program managers know about this beforehand. Make sure to submit an exemption of attendance form um, to registry if you reach 15%. So, Again, if you know that you're going, for example, let's say you are playing on the national team and you'll be gone, which means you're not attending your classes, you need to submit um, the exemption of attendance to the registry so that they know, um, you know, that they need to fix your attendance. Don't wait for it until the end when your attendance reaches 20% because then it will be difficult to, um, you know, fix things. Once you're removed from a course, you cannot be reinstated. Um, this happens if you uh, if you reach 20%, you'll automatically be withdrawn from the course and bringing you back on the course will be very difficult, almost impossible. So make sure that you keep track of your attendance. I know I'm repeating that, but it is important. I've seen so many students, they just fail because there's, we're so close to the end of the semester, but because of their attendance, they, you know, they fail, they get a WA grade. Okay. Uh, punctuality, again, for attendance, if you attend the whole um, session that was scheduled, the whole class, then you're marked as attended. But if you arrive within 10 minutes of the class starting, you get a late. I don't usually put late for students who arrive before 10 minutes. I put late for students who arrive uh, after 10 minutes. Um, I know we have traffic issues, we have all sorts of issues, and especially some of the students, they don't even drive themselves. Uh, there's someone else that's driving. So I don't uh, penalize if you arrive within the 10 minutes. I would really, um, 
I would be nice if you arrive after 10 min minutes. So let's say the class was supposed to start at 8 a.m. And if you arrive at 8, 11, that's considered late for me. If you arrive at like, let's say 8, 10, that is present or attended. Okay, academic progression. Okay. So students will be uh, excluded from a course if they fail a course twice. So if a student has failed the course, the same course twice, uh, they will be excluded. And um, if if the student uh, fails like 50% or more of their courses in one year, again, the, the student gets excluded. Um, I think this is called academic, academic probation. I think that's what they call it. Um, but yeah, so keep that in mind. If you fail a course uh, twice, you, you, you're excluded. Okay, uh, academic dishonesty, uh, we, we, again, I think everybody should know this, but cheating during exams is considered academic uh, dishonesty, presenting your work, uh, presenting someone else's work as your own work, which is called plagiarism, is, is a very, very, very serious offense. I've seen people getting, I've seen people, good students, uh, failing courses, because of plagiarism. Uh, the first time, maybe nobody will tell you anything. Uh, you'll just probably fail that assessment that you plagiarized. But the second time, you, you'll be excluded. Um, and it's it's that big of, a, big of an offense. Even cheating, it's a very big offense. Consider it's a very uh, severe offense uh, considered at Polytechnic. Cheating and plagiarism will be dealt with seriously. Like I said, almost 10% of students in ICT were caught plagiarizing last semester. Uh, most of them failed the subject. Some of them lost their scholarships. And to avoid plagiarism with your work with your English tutor to learn how to reference your work. So again, if you don't know how to, plagiarizing is nothing but you just copy pasting stuff from the internet. Let's say you have a report that's um, one of your assessments, like in this, course what you do is basically you go online you read a few articles and then you find information you just copy that information and you paste it uh, in the report and you present that as your report that is very very wrong it is that is what is plagiarism what you are supposed to do is okay you can read information online but you cannot copy paste the same thing because you did not write that um, those paragraphs right so what you do is you read and you then write it in your own words. You paraphrase it. So you read you, you uh, to understand what is written and then you write it in your own words and then you even reference where you got this information from. So that particular website or that particular book, where did you get the information? You reference it in your references for the report. Okay, Cisco certification, the exploration path uh, program uh, prepares students for the CCNA exam. So basically, uh, Cisco, uh, I mean, basically this course, if, uh, if you complete this course, it will prepare you for the Cisco certification, which is called uh, the CCNA, which is the first certification in the Cisco uh, certifications. And then there is CCNP and CCIE. These are very good in terms of if you want to go, if you want to take networking as your career path, these are good to get uh, good jobs. Um, CCNA is Cisco Certified Network Associate, NP is Network Professional, and IE is Internet Work Expert. So these hold a lot of value from what I know. Um, and you know, if you if you have these certifications, it will allow you, like I said, to get better jobs and better organizations. So please keep that uh, in mind when you're preparing for uh, when you're going through this course. Um, material located in Cisco Networking Academy website. There's this website called Cisco um, Networking Academy. Uh, you can get all the material available there, just like how it's shown here. All the information is available there. Again, we have the same information in our uh, slides, the course material, and the same you can find it on this website.
So the material, the coarse material is, the first one is packet tracer. Uh, like I said, it's a software that allows you to simulate networks. So you drag and drop and you connect networks and you, you know, configure networks uh, so that they can uh, work properly. It's a simulation, simulation tool. It's provided on Moodle. Again, this one is very important that it's very important that you um, uh, that you download the same version that's available on Moodle. Okay, do not download any other version if your version is different uh, as in as in the ones that you submit for your exam. Uh, so not exam or your project or for anything else. If you submit a diff, uh, um, an assessment using a different version of Packet Tracer, it will not be accepted. So make sure that the, the version that you're going to use is the same as the one that is um, on Moodle, okay? Then we have uh, CCNA Exploration 1 or Network 1. It's basically the book and also the material that was available on the website and CCNA to uh, exploration to routing protocols and concepts. Again, there's a book available. The, the books are also available in uh, the library for loan, and you can also get the same information on the website, San Francisco Networking Academy. That's it. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please contact me on this email. Where is it? You can contact me on this email. Uh, you can let me know uh, if you have any questions and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.